Okay. Whew. Uh, a little warning uh, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's been a rough weekend as far as working on the house, and so it's a, been a little bit interesting. Uh, it is St. Patrick's Day in 2019. It's also my sister's birthday, so here's to you. A little green crown royal. Because, hey, when it comes to math, most people are drinking. Okay, here we go. This little video is all about vertex form. So if you're discussing a parabola, the vertex form will tell you where the high point or the low point of the vertex uh, of the parabola is. Uh, in the case of, oh, and I don't have any, tell you what, what I'm going to do, this is going to irritate some, some people that ask this question, because it's like, no, I changed it. I'm going to give a negative one to that lead coefficient in the first one, just to show you that it, it is both the min and the max. Okay, so in a parabola, it either opens up, and so it has a low point, or it opens down, and so it has a high point. Uh, if you've had calculus before, finding this parabola or finding the vertex is actually pretty easy. You just set the derivative of the function equal to zero and solve for the value of x and then plug that in. If you haven't had calculus, it's a little bit more difficult, but it's not too bad. We can actually borrow something from calculus. Uh, in this case, however, we can actually look at the quadratic formula for a hint. So if it's been a while or you just don't remember it, that sort of thing, the quadratic formula is simply x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, if you search the internet and you're like, I can't remember that, there's 47 million videos out there on how to remember this thing, all from like um, <clears throat> my wife singing a song about it to uh, some teachers, I believe, from South Dakota that did roll, uh, did a song about it to Adele's Rolling in the Deep. I mean, there's poems about it, oodles and oodles and oodles. You'll find something. Um, my recommendation, muscle memory. I, I write this down every time I use it until I have it memorized. The end. I do that with a lot of things. Uh, you can certainly solve for this whenever you need it, or you can just complete the square, and ta-da, you're done. Anyway, we can kind of get a hint from this. This plus minus right here hints at something called symmetry, and this means that if you were to uh, if you were to rotate it, if you were to flip it, if you were to flip it vertically, it's going to look like itself. That's what symmetry really is. Uh, we have uh, humans have a, a, a fairly uh, bilateral symmetry. If you were to chop us in half from the top of our head uh, down through our pelvis, right through the middle then we are roughly mirror images of both sides. Uh, it's a rough thing because, hey, it's nature versus you know idealistic mathematics. Uh, in, in, perfect, in a perfect world, we are perfectly symmetrical. Uh, starfish have, have a symmetry, a lateral symmetry about them, but it's a pentagonic symmetry. Um, a square, you can fold a square, so you could fold it in on itself and open it up the other way, and poof, it's the same thing. So you've effectively flipped the entire square around, so it has symmetry in, in, in both the flipping actions. Uh, there are lots of different symmetries out there. A cool book on it is, um, uh, oh, um, uh, now I just lost my, I just lost, I had it's a monster, not the myth and the monster. I'm sure somebody will comment on it below and say, hey, I remember that book. Yeah, and it's, it's actually really cool. Uh, but it talks about supersymmetries in multiple dimensions. Anyway, here we go. So the hint is about this symmetry, parabolas are, act, you can actually flip them about the vertex or they have an axis of symmetry. And that axis of symmetry, at least when you're talking about functions, occurs when x is equal to this, negative b over 2a. So one way to find the vertex and if you are a calc person, you can go ahead and just take the, the normal quadratic equation and take the derivative and then set the derivative equal to zero and you'll find out that yes, in fact, the x value is negative b over 2a. Uh, the vertex can be found at the point negative b over 2a. And then what you do is you take it back in and substitute that back in. Now, if I recall correctly, there's a huge long thing that you can memorize. I think it's something like uh, 4ac minus b squared all over 4a, and that's the, the value of y if you were to substitute that in. It's so much easier just to do this. So that's what we're gonna do. 
on the flip side of that, once we get this information, we do have to put it into the vertex form of the equation, which just for a quick reminder is f of x is equal to a. That a is the same a that is the leading coefficient in every single one of these, by the way. x minus h, quantity squared, plus k, where hk, the, the, the point hk, is the vertex. So we're literally going to find the vertex, plug it in, and then laugh because we cheated our way through it. If you want to know a real way to do it, I'll see if I can find the video to it. It's not that bad, but it's a little weird because you're used to multiplying and dividing fractions at the same time, but you're not used to adding and subtracting things with it at the same time, so it's a little funky. Okay, here we go. First one. So number one, number one, here, one. Uh, f of x is equal to negative, we decided to change that, negative x squared plus 2x plus 2. And we want to put it in vertex form and find the vertex. All right, so here we go. We know that the vertex is equal, or the, that the vertex occurs, wow, that is the world's worst e, at the point negative b over 2a, and then comma, and then plug that in back for y. So we're going to identify those. Uh, b in this case is equal to positive 2, a in this case is equal to negative 1, and so uh, the quantity negative b over 2a is going to be this, which is just 1. So x equals 1. So our vertex right now stands at 1 comma something. That something occurs when we put this 1 back into here for x, and so we're going to find f of 1, which is negative, and then 1 squared plus 2 times 1, plus 2. This is negative 1. This is all going to be 4, so this is going to be 3. So this is f of 1 is equal to 3, which is 3 here. And now we have our vertex. That's all we had to do. Now we just shove it into the vertex form. And so if we have the equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, the vertex form of that equation looks like a times x minus h quantity squared plus k where h and k are the values of x and y in the vertex. So just plug those in. So f of x is equal to the a value is this negative 1. So it's going to be negative 1. You can change that later to a negative. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. x minus 1 quantity squared plus 3. And that's it. So we have a vertex. We have our vertex form. And life is good. Ta-da! The end. Watch and repeat. All right, number two. That's for you, Abby. Number two. Number two is uh, 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. Number two. f of x is equal to 2x minus 4x squared. Oh, 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. Okay. So again, we don't have to do anything special with this. However, <laughs> if you were to recognize this, you can factor out the greatest common factor, which is a two, and then you have the diff or you have a perfect square trinomial, you could factor that out and you'd have your answer. But we're just gonna continue on our way. And so we're looking for negative b over two a. That's gonna give us uh, b is equal to negative four, a is equal to two. So negative b over 2a gives us the opposite of negative 4 over 2 times 2, which is, oh, wow, look at that. That's 4 over 4 again, so that's going to be a 1. Nice. So our vertex is 1 comma something. Again, we're going to plug that 1 in there. So we find f of 1. And f of 1 is 2, and then 1 squared minus 4 times 1 and plus 2. So this is uh, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. Uh, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and then we have 2. So we really have 2 plus 2 minus 4, which is 0. So f of 1 is 0. So we put a 0 right there. All right, well, doing this then, we can just go ahead and throw that into the vertex form. We take something that's not any of the colors I've used. We take that vertex form that we'd had here. Ooh, that is the world's worst line. There we go. And we just plug everything in. And so f of x, in this case, the a value is going to be 2. So it's 2 times. And then that quantity is x minus, and then the value of the x variable in the vertex squared, 
plus zero. Now you can put that plus zero at the end or you can leave it off, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, your teacher may say, well, if you put the plus zero, that's just wrong. Sure. My students know me by now. It's, it's mathematical maturity if you don't include it. Everybody's, everybody walks like a baby when they first learn how to walk. So if this is your first time going through it, you go right ahead, you put that zero and wear it proud. I do, and I've been doing this for a while. All right, here we go, last one. Go up here to refresh ourselves here. Y equals five X squared minus 10 X plus two. Uh, y is equal to five X squared minus 10 X plus two. Uh, after this little spot, I'll go ahead and I will show you the alternative way that you can just maneuver this directly into the vertex form. This one's kind of nice to do it with, so it's not too bad. Uh, if you want, right after I'm done with this part, you can go ahead and stop the video because I'm gonna do it the exact same way as I did the other two. And then I'll show you how to do it the other way. So, here we go. We're looking for that negative B over 2A and identifying it. Wow, we are just, I have picked the most awful. <laughs> I just wrote these down, I found a couple in a book, and I have gotten very unlucky. All right, so B is negative 10, A is five. So if we do this, it's the opposite of negative 10 over two times five, which is 10, which is 10, which is one. So again, we have a vertex at one. Well, that's, it's, yeah, it is what it is, I suppose. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the Y value when X is one. So we just plug a one in for everything in parentheses. Don't forget the parentheses, please. So we have one squared is, is one times five is five. 10 times one is 10. Five minus 10 is negative five plus two is negative three. So this is one comma negative three for the vertex. Take all that information, you shove it right back in there into the vertex form. This is f of x, the a value is five. Then pull that out. And then we have uh, x minus one, the other one, the kind that looks like a one. And we square that, and then we just simply subtract three. Now the sign on the y value keeps the sign on the k value, but the sign on the x value actually flip-flops. So if you end up with a negative value of your vertex, or at least the negative value for x, then it's gonna look like x plus one instead of x minus one. It must be in subtraction form. So it's gotta be x minus blah, whatever that blah happens to be. Okay, if you want to stop the video right here, this is pretty much it. I'm just going to show you an alternative way to do these. If you're still here, congratulations. We're moving on to something new and perhaps unexplored. Y is equal to 5x squared minus 10x plus 2. We're going to get this into the vertex form first, and then we'll extract the vertex out of that form. The very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to gather up these first two terms. Now what we're gonna do is essentially complete, complete the square, but you know the very first part of completing the square is to divide by whatever that a value is. We can't divide because we don't have two sides to really divide by. So what we're gonna do is we're going to factor. And when we factor, that's like dividing, but then moving the multiplication somewhere else. And so we're gonna divide and multiply by the same thing not changing the value of the stuff. I'm gonna pull out the factor of whatever my a value is. So whatever leads the, the entire equation, I'm gonna pull that outside. Whatever's left goes back in the parentheses and I'm gonna leave some space at the end and I'll explain why later. But that's gonna give me an x squared minus two x. And then I've got this extra space here. And I'm gonna put the plus two on the outside. Now, this is the part where we need to complete the square. If you have gone through solving quadratic equations uh, and talking about the quadratic formula, the completing the square is a kind of the geometric version of, of what is happening behind the scenes. The ancient Greeks really knew how to do this and they didn't have algebra, they had geometry. So when they completed the square, they quite literally completed the square. That's what we're gonna do here. There's a quick way of doing it algebraically though. What you do is you take half of the B value. So once you've gotten all of that crud away from whatever that leading term is. In this our case, it's five. Uh, whatever's left for the B value, you're gonna go ahead and take half of that, so they get a negative one, in parentheses, and then you're gonna square that, and that's the number that you need at the end of your trinomial in order for it to be perfectly square. So we get a plus one. All right, now, 
we have a plus one. We need that plus one, but we can't just add one to one side. This is the trick behind it. Uh, because we can't just throw numbers in there and have it be equal, we also must undo whatever it is that we doed. So we're going to subtract one at the same time. Now here we're going to use the distributed property in a slightly different way than you're probably used to, but it's perhaps a more technical way to do it. We are going to consider, first of all, let me go ahead and write this down. This is A is times B plus C. All right, so we have our A value. This is the, the A values are five. We're going to consider our B value to be this stuff and our C value to be this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to say five times this stuff. So we're going to say five. Ah! My goodness, that was awful. Let's go down with that. Let's change colors because that's probably what happened. Anyway, we're going to say five times that stuff is simply five times that stuff. The X, the X, not the A. Come on, come on now, the X. And then we're going to distribute that five to this negative one and bring it out. So we distributed that five to this stuff, and so, but we're not distributing it to the stuff inside, just to that thing. And then we're going to distribute this five over here to this negative one, creating a negative five. Now the plus two hasn't done anything to it, so we just bring it down. So when we're finally done, what we have is a perfect square trinomial that can be factored. And when you do this, you take the root of the first thing, which is x, the root of the last thing, which is one, and that middle sign, which is negative. Square it. And then we go ahead and we combine these two things out here to be negative three. And lo and behold, this gives us uh, the values of our vertex. We can extract it here from H. The vertex is at the point one. Remember that minus sign has to be there and negative three, just as we did up here. So that's it. That's an alternative way to do it. Um, I, I kind of bounce back and forth. You can use your calculator to do it. I'm not saying you can't, but you know, if, if you want to, go right ahead. Uh, but yeah, I might tackle that in a different video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight as to what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, and you know what? At the end of it all, happy St. Patty's Day. Have a good one.